back. Listen, welcome back, guys. This is going to be a little, might be a little confusing. And if it is, I'm sorry. But I, I was so excited a couple of videos ago when I found this um, website. Uh-oh, I just did something. One second. Okay. When I found this website, um, Finding the True Cross in Ethiopia. And you guys know we're going over all of that stuff about Miriam. But this is about Ethiopia on a whole nother side. What I found here is that this is the Rastafarian Talmud. And they have links to the sacred text, which, I, which, I, which I'm guessing is what they're calling the Rastafarian Talmud. And these links lead to this. The Kibra Nagas, right? And the Kibra Nagas is, is, or the glory of the kings, is a 14th century national epic from Ethiopia written in Giz. Okay. In it has, it has, um, it's divided into 117 chapters. So it's a lot of stuff. I actually, no, I think I, I, all right. So, um, and this story that we're going to focus on for this next couple of videos are this about the Queen of Sheba and Menelik because um, I went to this uh, to these to this uh, what is it called sacred text. I went there, and this is what it brought up, and it's a whole bunch of stuff about this Kibra Nagas, okay, and and when it was written in. And, and to sum it all up, it doesn't have an author and it's a compilation of different stories. But um, this right here, what I'm reading is just the preface or something like that. And I don't want to get lost in here because I've been lost in this stuff, man. I'm going to have to do a lot more reading and I'm really not going to be able to comment on this because um, I'm not too familiar with it, even the pronunciation of the names and stuff. But it does say here that um, that uh, the work of Petronius made known for the first time the exact form of the Ethiopian legend that makes the king of Ethiopia to be a descendant of Solomon, king of Israel, by Makeda, the queen of Azeb, who is better known as the queen of Sheba. Okay, so this is what makes um, Haile Selassie in that divinic Solomonic bloodline. And that's why they worship him because they, 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 they consider him like a Christ uh, because they say he's from the bloodline of Solomon. All right. I went through here and um, just found little bits and pieces to stay talking about what we're um, the queen of Sheba, right? So a Sumerian or Babylonian inscription telling how some great queen from a latter day India paid a visit to a king of one day of the city states, okay? Um, and it is quite possible that the story of Solomon and the Queen of Sheba is based upon one which is far older, right? And then this is the actual story. I'm not going to read it. Uh, one day I will. And I, I would say you guys should go read it too if, if you're not familiar with it. This is my first time seeing this. So I've been reading it all day. But this is the actual story of when... This says the queen of Sheba, Makeda, uh, went to see Solomon. And then they ended up sleeping together and she got pregnant. And, and the story goes on. But I'm going to just leave it there because the son, Menelik, is the one who is supposed to be uh, related to Haile Selassie. I, from what I'm understanding, and if I'm, if I'm mistaken, I'm sorry. If anybody knows about this whole thing more than me... And I'm making a mistake. I'm sorry. Like I said, this is my first time coming into here. I'm really not even going to focus on trying to read out of this Kibra Nagas either because 
It doesn't have an author. It was translated many times. And um, basically it says that the principle, this is just the, the preface or like the introduction. It says the principal theme of the Kibra Nagas, that is the descent of the kings of Ethiopia from Solomon, king of Israel and the queen of the south or queen of Sheba was certainly well known in Ethiopia for centuries before the Kiba Nagas was compiled. Okay, so that's why, um, like I said, I'm not going to go and read about it, but this is all about the Solomonic line of kings, okay? Now, what we have in the Holy Megillah is going to blow your freaking mind because we also have the same book. Now, I want to show you one more time real, real quick what the title is. I don't know if Kibra Nagas means, but the glory of the kings, right? Now check this, Holy Megillah. Inside of the Holy Megillah, in the Old Testament, we have the glory of kings. And on my channel is a story about it. But I want to read to you about the revelation of the Queen of Sheba right quick. Because I think this is important. And I want you guys to, to really pay attention to the words because... In the Holy Megillah, it's not telling us a story that we heard in any of these other books. It is the same people, <laughs> but the story is different. So let's see who the Holy Megillah says the Queen of Sheba is. And I'm going to go through it really fast. Um, okay. Who is the Queen of Sheba? O over whom does she reign? Where is her palace? What is her nation? Whom does she serve? When will you see her? When will her work be accomplished? This is the Holy Megillah I'm reading from. There are many queens of Sheba, yea, and many kings of Sheba. For we read in the Holy Megillah, when a prince has opened the seven seals and with great diligence and persistence, having successfully ripened the fruit within himself, attains oneness with the seven roots and seven branches, he shall be a king of seven. For he now rules the seven kingdoms of the land within him which are the seven Sephirah. Even so, he rules in the names of Jah and Jalah, king and queen of the all. For only he who bows low before Jah Jah reveals the quodad, I probably said that wrong, which is the crown of humility. And only that one will know the kether, which is the crown of royalty, which is the fruit of the seventh branch. And when a princess does likewise, she becomes the queen of seven. Behold, in the tongue of the Nasserian, the word Sheba means seven. Wherefore, the queen of seven is the queen of Sheba. And it is revealed in the Holy Megillah that any prince, having opened the seven seals and become one with the seven roots and seven branches of the tree of life, becomes a queen of Sheba. Oh, any princess, sorry. And any prince who does likewise becomes a king of Sheba. But who are the princes and princesses? Lo, to be a prince or a princess, must we be born into the bloodline of a worldly king and queens? We read in the Megillah, Behold, the treasure of the ark is the fruit of the tree of life. And the Nasi, which is prince, or the Nasea, Nasea princess, are they who make a sincere effort to open the seven seals and taste the fruit. Sincere effort is steady progress in Omna with diligence, persistence, and loyalty, and right motive. The right motive is to serve Jaja by serving creation, motivated by love. In the light of the Holy Megillah, we read, no, in the light of the Holy Megillah, we see that each man and woman, whatever their worldly bloodline, may become a true prince or true princess if they be spiritual seekers, yea, each may go on to become a king or queen of Sheba if they open the seven seals and taste the fruit of the tree of life. And that fruit is the treasure within the ark. Okay. It keeps going. What are the seven seals? But I'm we're focusing on this queen of Sheba. So this Holy Megillah said that Each man and woman, whatever their worldly bloodline, okay, may become a true prince or true princess if they be spiritual seekers. 
that is the requirement. They, the, in the Holy Megillah, it's not no chosen people, but we're gonna keep going because I'm just trying to show who the Queen of Sheba is. Okay. Oh no, oh no. Here it is. Now, this is in my, this is on my channel too. So you guys can go and read this, whole, I mean, listen to this whole story. But Hanukkah, the first Yaira did not die. Now I have two videos on my channel about Hanukkah. She's the adopted daughter of Enoch. Okay. And she became the first Yair, which is the high priestess of the nation, of the Nasarian nation, right? Anyway, one day she disappeared. Yea, she appointed her successor, then went into the forest with the Ark of the Covenant and did not return. Wherefore, after some years passed, it was assumed she had ascended unto El Cush. But having ascended, she immediately returned to earth, keeping a human body, for lo, she did not die. Rather, she was initiated into the zero knee star, yea, and she began her ministry as queen of the guardian of the scrolls. And the guardian of the scrolls are but one of many ministries within the zero knee star, right? And over here it says, uh, talking about Hanukkah, by the declaration, beloved, I mean this, by that declaration, beloved, so... Let's see. Let's go up a little bit. Behold, the above is what has been revealed in the in the Megillah about Hanukkah, up to the glory of the kings. Now more will be revealed, but to receive you must become empty like a child. For lo, those filled with the opinions of the worldly will uh, of the of the world with the those filled with the opinions of the worldly will not receive this truth. Hanukkah, the queen of Sheba lives. Uh, so Hanukkah is the queen of Sheba and Sheba means seven, according to the, well, I don't know what it means in every other book and every other language and all that, but according to the Holy Megillah, it says that Sheba means seven. We just read that. Um, in this behold in the tongue of the Nasarian the word Sheba means seven wherefore the queen of seven is the queen of Sheba and the seven are the seven Sephiroths that is within everybody anybody can be that queen right so that was pretty good about the Queen of Sheba, all right? Now, the next video is going to be about this, the splitting of the kingly line of Abraham, because although we read, we read in that Kibra Nagas that Solomon and his son, um, there was a split that happened. And I don't even know if Solomon... But Solomon would know about it because Sheba went and talked to them and things. So, guys, this is just too much. But I'm going to stop this here. I just wanted to do and show you that the glory of the kings is also in this Kibra Nagas that I found in the Rastafarian Talmud. And it's also in the Holy Megillah. And yes, they are different. They read differently. But... The fact that there's two of them now is a second witness to that this book, the Holy Megillah, is not brand new, okay? That's all I can say. All right. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs>